Hello everyone, welcome back again. Uh, this class we will be looking into various uh, descriptive statistical techniques that can be used um, using uh, MS Excel. So mostly what uh, we will be uh, calculating are here are the very basic statistics and some graphical plots using the data given here. And the main statistical techniques that we'll be using are mean, median, mode, uh, variance, standard deviation, and the calculation of average and uh, quartiles. So these uh, will be the main. So in the previous class, I had shown you how to compute sum. Here also, you can I'll just uh, review it. So here uh, we have this density data for uh, different districts across to West Bengal collected from census 2011 and the sex ratio data as well. So if I want to calculate a total of whatever uh, is available with me, I can uh, I have to click in the last cell or a cell below wherever you want to but you have to be very much focused as to what data you are using and where the output is located. So you can I can click here, here, anywhere I just need to select the data but it is advisable that you use the cell just beneath it in order to remember where, uh, where the product of uh, the particular application or particular function lies so that if it's scattered it would be rather difficult for you to compute or identify among huge data sets. So here we have uh, this density data and I want to, to calculate sum. So one of the ways is just clicking on the cell just beneath the entire data and then go to auto sum and then just press enter on your keyboard and this would be giving the entire sum of the entire data. Now another way of doing is uh, I have to like, click here uh, on the end cell, the empty cell just beneath the entire data set, click equal, write sum and then double click here and Select the entire data, close uh, the brackets and click on enter. Here too, we have uh, seen that we have got the same result and this is how our sum looks like. So this is sum. Fine. Now mean or average are the same thing. So in the next uh, then we will be calculating mean. For calculating mean, we will be uh, having the similar function here as well. So we go to average. We are very careful that if you have already calculated something here, uh, so what we will uh, this doesn't should not be taken into account so we'll be selecting it in such a way that the calculation above should not be taken into account and just the data set uh, that needs to be used is taken into account so we just drag and have the blue box uh, encompass the just the data set we are using. So we click here enter and we get the average or the mean. So using this option we can do the calculation and similarly we can here also write equal to mean is not an option here so we write average. So we double click and then select the data set values that is required and then close the bracket 
and then click on enter. So we get similar results which are uh, which is obvious. These are two ways in which we can there are four uh, other few um, descriptive statistics such as the median. If you want to calculate the median, then the process is like you write equal to M E D I N as soon as you type that. You double click here, select the doc required document data, and then Put a close to the bracket and enter, you get your medium. Now, mode is something that you would get once a data value within the data set is repeated. Once you don't have a repeated value, you would get a no value for mode. So, here, how do we calculate mode? M O D E, and we double click here and select the data. The high chances there are no similar figure here. So once I select the data set and put a enclosed bracket to it, close the bracket and click on enter, there is no data here and it's not applicable. Now suppose if uh, I change Bakura's population density to 468, it will give me 468 as the mode because it is the number which has been repeated twice. So this is how we calculate mode here. For uh, standard deviation, what do we do? We uh, use formula given here as well. So standard deviation. Here I'm writing so that you understand. Uh, it's this part is not an essential, but it would ease your understanding as well as your uh, enable you to find data or whatever you require while doing a lot of other estimates and assessments. So here standard deviation is there and here I just write equal to like all the other calculations and write ST dev. So this is the one estimates standard deviation based on a sample, this is what we use for standard deviation. We double click here, select the data set, and close it. And then click yes. So, this is the standard deviation back for variance. Also, we use similar, we have various other functions such as you know, we can get it from here. We have covar which returns the covariance. So all these things you just need to use these abbreviations and you will get the data uh, assessed and analyzed the way you want. So there is a huge uh, base or database or it's rather not a database but um, a, you know, a storehouse of a lot of statistical techniques whatever you need you have to go and just check in the functions system here and you see here there are so many options you need to explore use them uh, YouTube is one of the best sources in which you can literally uh, identify a lot of other functions that can be used from here so this is how you can do some of the calculations now coming to using a graphical representations here also you can uh, one of another thing i can show you is uh, quartile so here you get the quartile and you write q and you select the data put a comma if you want the first quartile write one and then Put inverted as required and then close the bracket and enter. This gives you the first quartile. Similarly, if you want the second and third, okay, and the median quartile, so you, you will be getting your quartile values in this way. So, you see, 
this is the median, this is similar to the median, so second quartile is equal to median. So this is how you have, you get your quartile values, okay. So um, these are some of the techniques. Now coming to using graphical representation. Now for uh, mostly time um, enabled data, data that has time factor attached to it. Maybe rainfall over different periods of time, temperature, pollution data, whatever you are using, uh, that is mostly represented in the form of uh, line graphs. And uh, if we have a data set where there are uh, years or months or days, so what we generally do is select the data set here and go to insert we have different types of graphical options here so uh, for line graph we choose this option then click ok my data gets represented in the form of a line graph now uh, we have headings x axis y axis and c is name to be put here and uh, the variable here has to be represented, uh, whatever it's showing. So you select the x axis, go to click data, and then click on edit here. On the right hand side, we go and click on edit. We select whatever is on, should be on the x axis. It can be year, can be month, can be day, or um, as here we have text or state names. So this is how we can uh, select the data and click on OK. So we have uh, the x-axis labeled here, whatever are the components of the x-axis. If you want to write the series name, like what is this line representing, suppose it's population density. So I write here population density and then click on OK. So here this is how I have got and then just click on OK. So this is how this entire um, graph is obtained. In order to label what's there in X axis and Y axis, I just double click here and there is this option available. Uh, and you can check where you have all the options available. You have both Y axis, X axis, series level. I can find something here in layout 10 so I select this and I get a heading to it an x-axis y-axis labeling um, uh, options so here I write districts and then I write here density and then this whatever you want to Edit by right, population density of West Bengal. For census 2011, sorry, census 2011. Here you can go and put your cursor if you have missed something. You write like this, district wise. Population density of West Bengal. So this is how you get your graph. If you want to uh, bring it to a larger page, so you just right click here and go to move chart. And then select this new sheet option where chart 1 is there. You can rename it if you want. Whatever it is showing. And then click on OK. So we get the graph in a separate sheet other than what... Uh, from here it has been moved to a separate sheet so that your data sheet doesn't become clumsy with a lot of graphs you can save them and move them to a separate sheet so this is how you get a line graph for a bar graph you select the data similarly multiple variables go to insert and then you have column options if you want a comparative bar graph you have this option if you want a Compound bar graph, you have these options, you have 3D options, pillar and pyramids. So whatever ways you want, this is not something that should be put in uh, like density to sex ratio. 
but still I'm, show, I'm showing you uh, if you have suppose forest land and water bodies if you're showing land use land cover and meters of uh, districts uh, under West Bengal you have barren land you have agriculture you have uh, some uh, urban areas things like that so you want to show a comparative condition of those attributes for a particular district so in that case you have to select the data and go to insert and then take either whatever you is you think is suitable geographically because you are students of geography so you select it and you would get the bar graph and likewise you have to click here then right click go to select left click click here on the right hand edit to insert whatever should be the components in your x-axis so you go and drag and then click on ok here you have series 1 so what does series 1 state I this is a huge number here so this blue is density so I click on series 1 then I click on edit and then I write density of population okay and then I go to series 2 click on edit what is it showing it's showing sex ratio so click here and then go to 5 and okay again I have this chart layout if it's not visible in case you have clicked here in any of the cell those layout options vanish so you have to go and click here on the chart so that the chart layouts are visible and then we go and select the various options here I find in case of bar graph layout number 9 shows me x axis y axis labeling and the heading label side select it and then you can drag and change and you know place whatever you the ways you want you can remove the grid lines by selecting the grid lines and remove them you can select the bars right click go to format data series option and go to fill option and then click on the solid fill and then change the colors the way you want you can go to gradient fields and change various colors it's advisable for academic purposes don't use a lot of colorful stuff you know multicolored things there's not much scientific or textures it's not much scientific uh, you may use but it's preferably you should keep things simple in your graphical representations and uh, legible or identifiable or as well as distinguishable not too much of caricature so here we go to fill we choose solid fill and we can select any color we want or whatever colors you want then close it again you select the other bar graph which is very small here though uh, selected then right click go to format data series and then go to again fill then solid fill and again accordingly you can change colors whatever you want so these are the things you can do editing here I've already told you editing here and here and complete the entire look of the graph and move it to a different chart if you wish to and similarly for other graphs as well uh, go to chart type change chart type and you can you know for a particular data set if you want to see the representation of what the percentages so you select the data if you want to use a pie you have options of 3d pies 2d pies and uh, you can similarly for this section also right click and go to select data and you have the options here so different colors are showing different density so very well you can see that Kolkata occupies the maximum part of the population density here so 
this is how it's represented you can click ok and then here as well go and click density and then ok Again, ok and if you want to do labeling you have these options so you can select this so there are different ways you can try out and figure out what is best suitable for you these are the charts that are visible and uh, various other chart types you can explore from here. Okay, now I will come to something which is frequently used in uh, statistical analysis that is scatter plot. This one here I will show you. Now suppose you have two data sets. I will delete this uh, two charts. I think will be able to figure out. I will be providing you a data as well in your mail id and you will be, uh, I will ask you to practice on that. Now, uh, yes, what I was saying was uh, use of correlation and regression. So, mostly we use correlation in order to identify the type of relationship between two different variables like if there is uh, you know higher temperatures there is uh, more you know heat stroke or diseases uh, because of higher temperatures skin rashes and all that if you have uh, lower temperatures you have some different kind of skin problems different kind of health problems cough and cold and if you have data of those kinds or maybe uh, female literacy uh, vis a vis female employability if you want to look into relationships such as uh, the ones I just explained you have to use a correlation a correlation would show whether the relation is positive and negative and uh, whether one increases the other increases as well or whether one increases the other decreases whether this is, a, this is a negative or a positive relationship and to some extent the correlation coefficient shows the magnitude of the relationship uh, whether it's strong or it's weak uh, that we can derive using correlation and the relationship is established by regression like how much is y dependent on x like if we have a formula uh, any scatter plot any linear non-linear relationships have equations attached to it that is, and the equation explains the relationship between the two variables. Uh, we have the ability to understand how much a particular variable is dependent to what extent on another variable that the regression helps us. Now, while uh, calculating the correlation, uh, if we have, suppose, these two data sets which are just random. I'm just explaining you this they are not supposed to have any relationship and statistics remind that you can run relationships between anything but that has to have a logic you can run a correlation between number of birds flying in the sky uh, with the number of elephants walking in the forest if you have data you can just run a correlation or reflection but do, does in reality do these two factors really affect each other? That depends on your human knowledge. And that is very essential before you use any kind of statistical tool. That's very essential to understand before using any kind of statistical technique. Why you're using it and what it explains. So here like density has no relationship with sex ratio. But just in order to explain uh, you the technique how you have to do it I am just using this take two data sets so 
So for this, I have I can take out correlation coefficient by using fx, or you can just type corel and click go. I have correlation. This returns the correlation coefficient between two test assets. So I click so it's selected here. I go OK and then select the first set of data and again go to the red dot click here again come in second red dot and select the second set of array and then click on ok so i find there's a negative moderately negative relationship so this is what correlation gives me a correlation coefficient we can also understand the kind of relationship whether it's negative or positive by using a scatter plot. Now, how do I do a scatter plot? Similarly, like any other graph, we need to select the data first and then go to insert and then the scatter is available here. So I click on scatter and I've got a, a big outline here, here. This is because of Calcutta. And in case I delete this data set, see how much the changes happening to the entire scatter plot so let me take the crude data whatever was there okay so i can see that if one uh, increases like this parameter on the y axis if it's it's increasing the parameter on the x axis is decreasing so that is showing me a negative relationship so any graph that is having a tilt like this uh, would be a negative the correlated graph any graph that has a tilt like this as the trend line fit to it in, in this manner from your southwest towards the northeast then it's a positively correlated scatter plot so here this is how we get now how do we get the regression values so here, after we have done a scatter plot, I click on the data particles or the dots and then click and the right click on my mouse, go to add trend line and then select on the R square valued values in the chart and then can get tick on the display equation on the chart and then close. So here I have caught how y to what extent is dependent on x plus there is a y is equal to mc mm, mx plus c so this is what we get and this is how y is dependent on x whatever x variable i put my y would change accordingly and it's a negative relationship and the r square is 0.58 which is moderate so the relationship is a moderate one and the it's a negative relationship and I get the equation defining this relationship. So this is how I get my regression value. Okay. So uh, I think you have been able to understand the different ways in which we can use uh, various graphical plotting options. In the next class, I'll be... Uh, showing you how you can use R for doing these similar calculations. Hope this will be useful for you and the rest of the other things I would like you to explore by yourself because PhD is not about spoon feeding. It's about exploring and researching. So this is how I end this part of uh, my descriptive statistics using Excel. And in the next class, I'll be uh, focusing on uh, importing data, uh, writing data in R, and then uh, formulating various R scripts then doing a correlation and regression analysis both bivariate and multivariate and data processing such as factor analysis and data presentations like 
using graphical plots in R. In case of any problem, I'm repeatedly telling you, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much.